Welcome to Healthcare Heroes, a podcast powered by MPHub.com. We created this podcast to highlight the incredible, hardworking heroes inside healthcare. The entrepreneurs, advocates, and providers that are saving lives and improving their communities one day at a time. These are their stories. I just kicked my camera. I like how we started the podcast. Um, so I am super excited today to invite Patrice out to the podcast. Patrice, can you can you hear me? Can you see me? How are we doing right now? Yes, I can. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, Patrice, why don't you start off? Uh, obviously, I know you well. We've been friends for 20, since 18, 2017, maybe. Um, but let's let's kick this podcast off talking a little bit about who you are and uh, why should people tune into this episode? <laughs> okay. So hi, I'm Dr. Patrice Little, a nurse practitioner, a writer, speaker, and all the things that are created to the gift of communication. I've been a nurse for 13 years and nursing is my second career and media is now my third. <laughs> so I um, launched a um, platform called MP Student Magazine back in 2018 and the whole goal was to make sure that nurse practitioner students had a space where they could receive the supplemental support that they need to navigate through their NP school experience. Um, that's one of the largest gap that has been in practice and it quite, I yeah. find it quite odd that there was nothing for NP students even though nurse practitioners have been around since the late 1960s. That's amazing. So you said, okay, so nursing was your second career. Uh, yes. Be, getting in media is your third career. What was your first career? I taught secondary science. I taught high school for three years. And, really? Um, I, yeah. Wow. I did. Can't you okay. tell? By, so I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. So um, my first degree is biology pre-med. And actually what happened um, that I highlight in um, one of our books called Think Like an NP is that nurse practitioner found me. That career found me. I was completing my biology pre-med degree and it was suggested that I really explore just all everything that's out there. And I took a liking to the nurse practitioner that was on campus. I went to her and said, hey, can I shadow you for a bit? And the shadowing turned into a um, volunteer opportunity and that okay. turned into a work study opportunity and mm -hmm. we develop a relationship and she still supported me in my dreams with going to med school she even bought me an mcat book but what ended up happening is i said no i want to be an mp i don't want to take i don't want to um go to medical school again i like how you interact with the students and i like how you can do some of the same things physicians do but you your schedule is not as strenuous and so what she advised is that I finished the, um, my degree because I literally was like entering my senior year of that program. And she said, finish your degree and then come back for nursing. So I graduated um, in 2008 with my biology pre-med degree. And I just needed to figure out something like to do. And my mom's like, they're going to take you off of the health insurance. You need to find something now. So... <laughs> I decided to look into teaching. Um, I taught secondary science, which that includes physical science, earth science, and biology. I did that for three years. Two years of those three years, I taught in a ninth grade academy. I served on a committee uh, that uh, built up a curriculum to prevent um, basically dropouts. Okay, that's an easy mm -hmm. way of saying it. So, right. which has a lot to do with what I have now with MP Student Magazine and some of the courses that we offer. All of that has a foundation in my just early years in my 20s of really building curriculums. I've been putting together courses and working with teams and committees since I was like 23 years old. Um, it just, it was always in me. And so what happens is I just continue to draw on that to be like, to make sure this platform serves as a resource for students to prevent them from dropping out. So, you know, we wanna say we want retention when they're in school, but the only way you can get to retention is you have to address 
their lifestyle needs. And we figured that out early back in 2003 with our ninth graders. We knew that if we had something in place to support them throughout their ninth mm -hmm. grade year, they will more likely matriculate through high school. So that's the purpose of that. So it's pretty cool. That's amazing. I don't think I've ever heard that about yeah. the kind of part one in your career. And I, and I like you're seeing it more and more now where, um, you know, a typical, I would say like, like a typical professional now, especially if they're more in the knowledge work, they're going to be, they're going to have multiple careers. You know, they might start off, you know, we just hired someone, um, our, our new marketing manager, and our first career was more in like academia. Right. And she was more mm -hmm. like, like in like, um, in higher education. And then she's made that transition now into more of a marketing role. And like, she, you know, I, she don't know how old she is, but I think I should. She's probably listening in, being like, "You know this," but I, I was just, let's just say, <laughs> I think she's twenty nine. I think I hope she's twenty nine. Um, okay. Anyway, but 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 that's like you know really you young. Say in your... she's younger than what she is. You oh, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm on the spot. I I should. I didn't have enough coffee. I'm digging myself in a hole. Uh, but long story short, um, um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So it's like almost like she's had two careers already, you know, and like we've sort of had um. A lot of different professionals like like on our team that you know they come from one career they jump into a second or a third this and another third career because people do have that flexibility in changing so i think mm -hmm. that's uh that's a, that's a, that's incredible um that you've done that how i think the the transition from educator to nurse makes sense um i can i see it the way you described it what re, what what made you go now from from nurse, nurse practitioner, I should say, then to um, essentially in media, right? Becoming like a, like a founder uh, and editor. I know you were editor. You served as editor chief of your magazine for quite some time. How how did that come about? Well, it's so funny. I really believe that the universe kind of like leads us to the direction that we're supposed to be if we surrender. So you already know, uh, Krish, I'm governed by the moon and I follow the stars. <laughs> so, so here's the deal. I really believe in going with the flow and trying not to resist something that is really meant for you. Oftentimes we, especially, and you're like me, first generation American, when you're told three options, doctor, lawyer, engineer. So I'm prefacing my yes. uh, statement right now. <laughs> So when you're told only doctor, lawyer, engineer, and that's really what's in my family, doctor, lawyer, and engineers, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's other um, careers as well, but you tend to do everything by the checklist, get the degree, <laughs> get married, yeah. have the children. I did all of that and live exactly by what they said to make me have a good life. Well, what happened is I neglected who I was at the core. I've been writing and speaking for so long. Even my scholarship in undergrad for the biology pre-med degree, I had a forensic scholarship. There's three types of forensics. You have forensics where there's public speaking, where you compete, and then you have forensics, which is when you work with correctional uh, patients at the hospital, They're the forensics unit. And then you awesome. actually have forensics, which is kind of like, working more so with um, not just cadavers alone, but just crime scenes. So mm -hmm. that's really how that came um, about. And I think I forgot part of, of, of your question. You're just asking, how did I segue into media? And so what yeah. happens is it was really almost pageantry. So I was I got my daughter into pageants. And at that time, I was working on a book and she did not win that pageant and she felt bad and i said it's okay i was like mommy's done pageants and she hasn't won i said i won other things but just not the pageant so i said would you like mommy to go and do a pageant in front of you so i could show you how it's done she said yes so that's when i signed up to compete in the um, mrs america um prelim specifically miss georgia mrs georgia so i did that in 2015 and then competed again in 2016 and um, competed with Mrs. Georgia International in 2017. And um, at that pageant, the judge, one of the judges, well, actually most of the judges were impressed by me. And what one of them decided to do was connect me with an agent. She was like, do you have an agent? I think you'll be good for television. So that's how that started. And what happened oh, wow. is I also had a platform. Many individuals, they want to do media but they do not have a platform. See, nursing is my training. That's what I get to do. But what 
I feel like I'm created to do is really to empower people, specifically women, to really tap into their authentic self. Um, and it takes work, trust and believe. Like even with me over the past three years, I still had, to, I went under went a lot of healing from some things that impacted who I was as a person, not just in business, but also in relationships and for how I looked at myself. So mm -hmm. I use my story from the book, Out of Crazy Born Genius, where I talk about the seven principal areas of your life that you need to have discipline in, starting with self. If you have a good self-concept, and the only way you can do that is to be aware that something is wrong and be able to do an inventory. Once you do that, you're able to figure out that, hey, I can do better because I want, if you want better results outside, you're going to have to start working from the inside. So inside out, you guys, inside out. Oh, and that's, so that's, a, that's a good line. I'm going to have to, I'm going to take that. <laughs> that's a, that was a, that was a quote. I love that. Oh, thank you. And so what happened is, and I'm giving you guys a scenic route of the story because I want you to understand that it doesn't just happen overnight. Success doesn't just happen overnight. You discover overnight. There is a process. There's some grooming. There is, and it's best that you get the practice on a smaller scale before you're in front of a large audience. Like now I feel like I can do anything in front of millions of people because I had a season where I was being groomed and doing it in front of smaller scale. So even with television, it was local television. I've done an appearance on Atlanta Live, more so Christian uh, programs talking about my faith and how I was able to move forward after surviving a traumatic experience as a child and moving forward into my career. And the reason why to some people they may seem, they, it may appear to them that I may be a little rigid and it's all perspective. Some people may be review me as rigid. Some people may say, man, she has good boundaries. It's all perspective. <laughs> <laughs> but those things are in place because it secures my mental health so I can be the woman that I need to be to serve my children and to yeah. serve people. That's, no, that's, inc that's incredible. I think you said that was so interesting. Like you started off saying like, you know, I'm a product of a first generation, uh, first generation uh, uh, American. And like that right off the bat has so much kind of like so many layers to that, right? And you say like yes. you talk about being a first generation and then you talk about boundaries. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know a single person who's a first gen U.S., that says that they grew up with healthy boundaries in their family. That just does not exist. Oh, yeah. It's no. not a component no. at all. <laughs> oh my God, I, that was hilarious. And what you were saying about like being a doctor, lawyer, engineer, um, even I think it, it stopped happening last year. Mm. Yeah, last year. But my mom would still like sort of like ask my dad or even like ask me be like, so like how do you like 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 how do you like make money? Like how do you like get paid? Yeah. You know, like, well, <laughs> I have, like, yes. well, like, we have, like, 30 employees. Like, what do you, what do you, we run a payroll, you know, like, we're all part of it. And yeah. just, just did not compute for her, you know. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it's so interesting, um, the, the, the layers that come in and that you sort of, like, are kind of grown up with that. It almost feels like mm -hmm. as you start becoming the, kind of like your story is telling, it sounds like a lot of, um, you went down a path that was a good path, but it wasn't a path for you. Right. And then yes. you have to figure out, OK, well, hold on. What is the path for me? And I think a lot of times once like once somebody figures that out, they realize like a lot of the stuff they were they grew up with, they have to sort of unwind. And that's really yes. challenging. It's, it's it's hard to talk about because it sounds so like, you know, I'm sure people folks listening in are gonna be like, what the what the, what the hell are they talking about? Are we talking about like nursing and entrepreneurship. But like in a way, you need to do that sort of like that that development in order to get rid of your bad habits or at least be aware of your bad habits, Ooh. you know, man, Chris, you just gave me chills. <laughs> That's exactly right. And let's get to the, you know, let's get to some more details. Cause you know, I don't mind being transparent. I uh -oh. started MP student magazine in 2018 and we mm -hmm. are in 2021. And part of the reason why it took some while for me to actually see, see the growth because my business was a reflection of how I viewed myself inside and I'm okay mm -hmm. with saying that. So what happens is I, I, I know that I've missed out on a few opportunities because I wasn't able to really see the, the goodness in that because mm -hmm. it just kind of had a lot to do with me still going through my healing period. So it's important mm -hmm. that for those who are tuning in to really pull away from it, to not compare yourself, your entrepreneur journey to someone else. Because let me tell you this, I know this thing about to take off right now, I'm about to be the bomb.com because I know I am the bomb. <laughs> 
I'm the it. I S H. Okay. <laughs> now I have that viewpoint. But if you would have asked me three years ago, there was so much going on. Yeah. I was not confident enough to move forward, uh, to move a business forward, and to really go about forming my team. Because if you, as a leader, as a CEO, if you're not grounded and you don't have any type of practices in place to be able to handle your emotions, you're going to end up impacting your staff, and no one is going to want to work for work work for you or with you. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's important to understand that that really about businesses you want to pursue scaling when you start a business the number one thing you want to think about is having a marketing team to make you visible and then the second thing is to scale how can you put processes in place so your business can be automated so you could be chilling on the beach in montingo bay that's what those are the things you want to do and yes it is about giving back but the only way you can give back is if you can really if your platform is bringing in the revenue yeah, to yeah. support you and stuff like that so oftentimes people are like oh you know send me dms can you give back or can you do this oh this would be really good and i'm like look i have a son who is eight years old who is a dancer you don't see too many of those but he's on his way to go to alvin Ailey. we're speaking that or with debbie allen so he's a dancer how many young black males or males period you see a dancer that's expensive he does tap and ballet jazz and hip-hop He's, he's been doing it for four years and I have a daughter who's does that. So that's how I'm giving back. I'm making sure that my children are functional. So they can yeah. be productive citizens in society and then everything else comes into place. And it's not that I don't want to give back to any other thing. I feel like I give a lot. And that was a lot to do with how I, you know, went through that season of really feeling down and not having a good reflection of myself. Sometimes you give, 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 and you're not being restored. And then yeah. it, it it messes up everything else. A it thousand percent. Is. I, I wanna so I, I wanna go um, in in a few minutes to go to that section. We talked about how do you manage like you need to have a process on how you're managing your own emotions and your, your own mental state. And I really want to talk about that. I don't actually don't think we've talked about that enough on this podcast. And I think it's really underrated. And I think it's be super valuable. I, I'm hoping it's valuable for the NP students who listen into this as they're sort of like getting the. I don't want the shit kicked out of them while they're in school um, and they right. don't have any report and any support. Um, but my, 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 my other hope is that I think this goes out to a lot of the um, providers that are listening that want to open up a practice at some point. So it's good there. But before you go there, um, the, the concept of uh, giving back, right? Um, I think a lot of people don't realize that like, like it's almost like there's this like societal expectation of the minute you're doing it okay, give back everything or, or, or give back right away, right? Or just continue, just do that. But the thing is, is that's not sustainable, right? With the <laughs> terms of giving, like like the the concept of, of giving, in, in my opinion, you want to do it in a sustained fashion, right? There is no, oh my God, this fire alarm going off in our house. It's hilarious. Uh, my girlfriend's cooking. That's why. Um, uh, but <laughs> so, so that's so funny. Uh, oh, she's going to be so embarrassed. She's going to like, that's going to be hilarious later. Um, <laughs> but okay, so... Um, uh, the thing with giving is like, you know, you can give once or give twice, right? And that's a good thing. But isn't it better to give once a quarter for 10 years, right? That's sustained giving, right? There's, just this, there's, there's a compounding nature to that that a lot of times Correct. people don't necessarily think. And you need to sort of make sure that in some ways you are selfish up front because you have yes. to be able to take care of yourself properly before you give with you a thousand percent there. Um, so... That, that that's interesting when when did you or i don't say when a better question is what do you do maybe on a daily basis or weekly basis that helps you manage your emotional state for work or family um so okay <laughs> so what happens i have a um i live a very uh, disciplined life which starts with my sleeping schedule um and so currently I make sure I get up between 4 30, 5 o'clock, really to meditate and to reflect and really set my intentions. And then I go about into my role as a mom because I still take my children and pick to school and pick them up every day. So I make sure I do that. And then I I have actually a schedule written out, written out. So from nine to ten, I do one thing from and then I take a um, a 10, 15 minute break and then 
I go on to something else from uh, 10 15 to 11 45 sometimes so I actually have things that structure for me sometimes have um, alarms that's in place so I know to stop and move on to the next task um, I utilize calendars a lot so I feel like even if it's casual conversation and someone's like hey let's meet up for coffee next week um, such and such and I'm like yeah which date what time okay and then I put it in the calendar right away because I don't like those yeah. I don't like surprises um, and then what happens is the reason why I did that because that was stepping out of being a giver sometimes you say yes 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 because mm -hmm. in your mind it seems like it's possible and you can commit but when you really think about the steps and how long it takes to do each task so that's what I started doing. I'm like, when I do this task, I realize that it's seven steps to complete this one task. So my to-do list is not seven for per day. It's really one to two items because there's steps to achieve to complete that one to two items. Yeah. And then in the middle of the day, I may um, like walk. If I don't walk, um, do like a meditation. YouTube have all sorts of types of like midday meditation where you just take a pause. That's it. I even tell um, students, even if it's five minutes, to take a pause, which means step away from everything, just recenter yourself. And sometimes like life happens with the contrast, so it forces you to do that pause. Take that pause and reflect and say, okay, did I get off task? Did I, did I get distracted from what I'm supposed to get done today? And that mm -hmm. would bring you right on back. Yeah. And as you close out the day, you need to have a, and, and, and I'm telling you, you need to, because I'm telling people they need to get it. Like, so yeah. I'm being bossy right now. I'm being bossy. Oh, do it. Do it. Okay. I'm going to give you the entire screen. What'd you say? <laughs> I'm going to give you the entire screen. What do, what do they got to do? <laughs> so get a gratitude journal. Before mm. you close out your eyes at night, talk, at least think of one thing that you're grateful for that was successful for today. Like today, mine is going to be this podcast. Like, yeah, it went well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, even though you have like nerves going on, but you know, it was fun. So sometimes it doesn't have to be something that was like tangible, like um, money that was made. Sometimes it can yeah. be like, hey, you know what? Today was such a nice and peaceful day. Put it out there. Every time you express gratitude, the universe has a way of just bringing it back to you. I'm telling you, every time I go to bed and I'm like, okay, this is good. Yes, some things could be um, better with that and we'll get there when it comes again. But go to bed in peace because that impacts the type of the quality of sleep you're going to get at night. Trust and believe because sometimes I wake up 2 o'clock in the morning because stuff is on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so to do that. So I, I said a lot, but just in a not, nutshell, definitely um, incorporate pauses and gratitude. Um, of course, clean eating. I didn't talk about that, but definitely exercise. That helps you like manage your day to day. And, 100%. I'm, and, and I'm telling you and say no. A hundred percent. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know a, a, a single successful I don't want to say I don't know a single one, but I would say at least 80% of the successful entrepreneurs I know are extremely hyper-disciplined. And they do the same things <laughs> over and over and over. Hyper-disciplined. Because <laughs> it's, it's not even, this isn't like a, like, you know, like, like a foofy concept. Like, I think this is something really well yeah. known, especially like, like in the tech sphere. Um, uh, I forget his last name. All right. I don't know how to pronounce it right, but I think it's like, it's like Jocko Wil Wilczyk. Uh, I'll try to tag it actually in this podcast episode, but he's a, a former Navy SEAL um, and he has his own business now, own entrepreneur, does a lot of speaking, and he coined the term discipline, discipline equals freedom. And the biggest thing is like when you are constantly, um, it's almost like by practicing extreme discipline, you free up your mind to be the most creative. So for me, very similar to kind of what you're saying, like I have a hyper, um, I don't, a standardized practice. I do the same thing every night and the same thing every day. And Good. like my, my nighttime at 9 p.m., um, every day at 9 p.m., um, I would say I do this Sunday through Thursday. Fridays, I will not do it. And Saturdays are maybe. But um, basically, the way my, my Friday, like the end of my day starts at 9 o'clock, I'll kind of go in back into my office and reflect on my day. 
Um, and I literally have a template I follow and I'm looking at it right now. Um, and I did it, you did it last night. And it's like, my first thing is that as I, I ask myself how my day was and I describe it. Then I, and I summarize my day. So I understand why I don't just give myself a six out of 10 or a seven out of 10 without context. Cause if I ever look back on it, I want to know what happened. I do great. Uh, I write down the three best things that happened to me that day. Right. What's that? That's a gratefulness thing. Right. There's always mm-hmm. something good happening that day. And honestly, yes. a lot of times if it's a, if it's a bad day, it might just be, I ate well. I had, I hit my workout. I did a med- I meditated, you know, like <laughs> exactly. a lot of times it's just that, um, the big thing is I always, I, I've always, um, always the next thing I, I, I write down is what's the most important thing that needs to happen the next day. So that way in the morning, I'm not waking up, um, and dicking around trying to figure out what do I need to work on? What do I need to do today? It's like, no, no, no. I wake up. I know. I know what I need to get done that day. And that's the most important thing. And I, my, my team knows this about me. I do not take a meeting um, uh, unless it's really urgent until 1130 or noon. But I'm, I'm up and working early. So that two hours, two and a half hours of time in the morning is my time to get done whatever I need to get done that day. You know? So that's like just, that. you know, you'll never see me do a podcast at 9 a.m. Never, ever. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's because I just can't. I have to focus on my most important thing that day. Um, yeah. Write down a few other things. Um, I ask myself, what's my max effort I can give to my health the next day? You know, um, mm. that's a big one for me. Um, and I, um, and then I, I ask myself if I meditated today. And then this is a big thing. And I would actually encourage anybody who is really hard on themselves. If, if, if you're somebody that um, can never just live with a compliment and you sort of always have to like, backtrack it or if you're someone that has to like almost like disarm it you know if someone's like oh i have you know hey your, your hair looks amazing today like, oh well i had to do this this and this you know like if you're in that person who can't accept <laughs> yeah. it i always i i i, I ask myself three things that'll give my that will let me give myself a 10 out of 10 tomorrow like what are the three things i need to get done so tomorrow i can say i had a 10 out of 10 day because mm-hmm. i don't know about you but like, as a first generation like i grew up like Nine, like there is no 10 out of 10 right like 90 <laughs> percent is is the max you could <laughs> do and then you're so pissed you're and then you're pissed at yourself because you only did 90 so you never you could never win you know that, that's a, that's not a healthy life that's not a good life you know so it's, it's that's like, like so what intense. happened i remember when i told yeah. my grandma i'm like grandma i'm graduating for nurse practitioner school she said oh okay uh i'm just waiting for your sister to graduate from med school what <laughs> well that damn that shit is deep this shit's deep <laughs> uh yes i mean you and i both know there's no harm by it because that's our culture because they're just so outspoken but it does feel like you could never hit the mark you know oh yeah oh 100 100 with you um i remember my dad <laughs> my dad uh got this um he was gifted this really really nice bottle of scotch and people that know me know that like um i don't say my first love because that sounds horrible like my first um admiration with alcohol like i'm a big scotch person and then i eventually turned into a wine mm-hmm. person so uh my dad had this amazing bottle of scotch um it was like something really rare i don't know he just gifted it so um i think at the time it was like worth like a thousand bucks or some shit like that it's crazy so for my college graduation he came and he brought this bottle he's like chris we're gonna have this bottle on your college graduation i said awesome can't wait super excited for it college grad he brought it but for some reason it decided not or not this is not the occasion to do it so what? we didn't have it then we didn't have it then then next up um uh you know a few years later so what was that that was 2012 when i graduated or the year i graduated yeah so that was 2012 a couple of years later um i was working uh in my corporate sales do- job out of, out of college in that first year there i finished 70th out of a thousand and i was like all right dad like now's the time no 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 not right now i said okay fine um so then i asked him hey like what like, like when 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 are we gonna have it and he's like well and then i told him i wanted to start a company he's like okay when your company gets big and you know you're you're, you're like sustaining yourself we'll have it then still nothing then he was like when do you sell your company and i said okay now i have to sell this company then one day i have to do it so basically uh, nothing has been the case yeah. i'm actually almost certain that it's going to be like at the birth of your first child who has to be a male who then has to graduate from Harvard <laughs> will be like the day it's allowed. Uh, they will toast. We'll have a sip. That'll be the day. Um, 
I have no idea how we got there, but that was uh, fantastic. Um, yeah, it's funny, but I mean, yeah, we got there because of the, the simple fact that, you know, sometimes um, it's not necessarily a bad thing being raised with that influence to keep on going, mm -hmm. that there's more and there's possibilities, because that actually is good for entrepreneurs to, un to understand that sometimes when you start your business, you only see for like at this point of view, but there's, it's always, there can always be more and it can grow and it can grow to be aware that there's a possibility. And it sounds like with your dad, that's what he was doing. He just wanted you to know in a <laughs> unique type of way that you can grow and keep growing and keep going and keep going um, and and so forth. But hopefully maybe for New Year's, <laughs> you, can, you can have a yeah. drink. This New Year's, <laughs> let's see, um, you know, maybe, we'll see, we'll, 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 we'll see if he caves. Um, so let's uh, l let's go a little bit into um, NP Student Magazine. Um, so I, I kind of like these episodes where you haven't scripted what to talk about, so I can kind of like try to get you by surprise. That's my goal. Um, so with with NP Student Magazine, what is the next? How are you thinking about twenty twenty two? So you have a lot of nerd. I mean, tons of professionals are coming in. New Year's resolution time, all that jazz. Um, as a business owner coming in, you're in December. How do you think about growing and how do you think about your 2022 goals in your business? Um, I'm excited to talk about our 2020, 2022 goals because 2021, can't talk about 2022 until you talk about what you did 2021, was a lot to do with restructuring and making sure that we were intentional about what mm. our platform stood for and what services that we were offering. So. If we look back over between 2018 and 2021, uh, there were different courses that I've launched, all sorts of different types of product. But the thing is this year we focused on being a little bit more seamless and we actually brought back one product and said, hey, you know what? Let's just focus on this one product to see how it goes. Sometimes when you're trying to push too many products all at one time, you could really <clears throat> lose focus. Um, most people are trying to pursue like, you know, multiple streams of income. Okay. I do believe we should all have a goal for that one day, but if your one product is not pulling in, if that one stream is not successful, there's no point of trying to have multiple, cause you can just have, have multiple headaches. Yeah. So oh. we decided to, <laughs> I, I love this. I love this episode today. This is good. <laughs> so we decided to relaunch our digital flip <laughs> issue that we would like to Print, for those of you who are tuning in, the only way we're going to print that um, ish, those the magazines, the quarterly, quarterly magazines, is if we have enough like people subscribing for it to be worth it. But other than that, digitally, most for this generation, our generation, we, we, we're kind of not purchasing like things that are tangible, like anyways, as far as magazines, we actually just yeah. flip through things. So that is our goal to do that, make sure we highlight more students and put them on the cover. And I'm excited about uh, one of our students that we're going to highlight. And then we will bring back, we didn't have it in 2021, we will bring back our um, <clears throat> end of the school year summit that we want to have once a year. Um, in 2022, it will be on Saturday, April 23rd. It was called our Next Gen NP Virtual Summit. And that was a summit to help you transition from new grad into the workplace. Um, we were able to get it approved for seven contact hours. And the oh, contact amazing. hours covered topics. Yeah, it covered yeah. topics. It was cool that have to do with resume. So people that we featured was Amanda Guaneri from Resume Rx, who now oh, has- Oh, I love her. Yeah, She's I love amazing. her amazing. So, so oh, big fan. And so, and then we um, had Brittany Weinstock, Dr. Brittany Weinstock with the nursing studio to talk about how to prepare for tests, the, like what to do the day of the exam. Because most of the time we tell people how to prepare for boards, but you need to know what to do the day, the, the night before the day of, because oftentimes it's the type of practices that you have where you can psych yourself out and not be successful your first time with board. So that's important. And then we had um, an individual talk about money management. Um, the topic was um, more money, more problems. <laughs> I think it was like, no, more money, more, more money, no problems or whatever. And we talked about how you're transitioning from um, what you make as a base salary as an RN, maybe 75 to 80,000 a year up to 94 to 131,000 
per year. So with that jump in money, it's so important that you know how to go about managing it. So those just as a, a few topics, yeah. but we had ended with a first year's panel. So the first year's panel is where students, um, pardon me, new grads, between six months to two years out, where they talked about their experiences from transitioning, just to really make sure they just the, deposit some form of inspiration in those who are getting ready for graduation. So that's why it's held on the 23rd, because most students end up graduating that Saturday after or in May. So we always try to make sure we capture them right before um, they actually walk but after they finish their clinicals and everything. So this is usually doing their downtime and, and yeah. definitely after the podcast, yeah. I'll share more details with you, you know, you guys to include you on that as well. Because that's also a good time. Oh, this is hilarious. Uh I'll be see if I can pause <laughs> okay. it. That's so funny. I think this is the funniest thing that's gonna happen. Uh okay, you're good. So that's also a good time to um just put the message out there to start recruitment for preceptors because when students come out it's so fresh of what their experience was while they mm -hmm. were being precepted they more than likely they do not they either two things they don't want someone to experience what they did in order to get an NP degree or the yeah. second thing is hey I had a great experience I want to be able to give back and so forth so that's also a good time to you know just start having them on a, like an email list so you can like re revisit them later. So I, I get so excited when I talk about that, but I will tell you this, for those who are tuning in, um, we, more than likely we will amend the name. One of the things is I'm huge about copyrights and trademark. And I think there is another, I'm pretty sure because um, ours is next gen, N-E-X, uh, gen, G-N. And there happened to be someone who has an N-E-X-T uh next gen np and so and i just say that because for those who are going into business it's so important that when it comes to branding and name that you just be cautious because if that name is already out there and somebody's utilized it and even if you didn't realize it you want to fix yours once you find out um and yeah. so forth yeah 100 percent research yeah you can have your attorneys research to find out when they started with the name first um, mm. And there's ways to find that out. And I, I did my research and I found out that they started using that name maybe a year before mine, even though it wasn't on a large scale. So um, I just want to make sure that you guys know that that the summit is coming up um, April 23rd, which is a Saturday. It's an all day event and it's virtual. And you, for you, if you get your tickets in advance, you'll be able to view it on demand. But the name may change. OK. <laughs> No, I, I, it and makes sense. Really, more likely it'll be a different name. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, and, and I think any, any tip for anyone who's starting a small business, like even if you're a medium-sized business, the hassle of the like legal challenges are not worthwhile to deal with, you know? So it's like no, no, there's no. so many different combinations <laughs> of a name. Just like it's, so, it's, it's easier to figure out a different name, change the brand than it is to try to get into like a distracted legal issue of like, oh, I want this name or no, you have this name or, or, or whatever, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's just not even worth it, you know, so when you can't do like, like, <laughs> exactly. like next, yeah, next gen, you just create it like, I don't know, you know, I don't know, NP next gen, next generation or something like that whatever yeah. it's just so much better um it's so much better i mean yeah. and we already have the domains like one of the things when you're in media and entertainment you're huge with like domains so i mean yeah. i usually don't tell people how many domains i have but i think i'll drop it because i want them to know how serious it is so i think i have a total of 187 domains which is really nothing compared to some wow. of the um, mentors and stuff that i have i mean there are people who have a lot of domains so, but it's variations of names like it will be like mp student magazine the mp student magazine mp student mag MP student, like, yeah yeah, yeah. and everything <laughs> variations of everything and one of the things that i did is because um and this is good since we're talking about that we're talking about the legalities of having a business and so forth um and with name even with mp student um I did, you know, I made sure that the, the first time I applied, I had some challenges and I didn't move forward with the trademark. But the second time 
um, and I got word from my attorney that everything's good with the three different classes and no one could make a shirt that says MP student because we can go after them and no one could do this with MP student. Yeah, yeah. So the, the joy of having that, you know, because mm -hmm. being a small company and you have larger entities, like I'm grateful for AANP, I'm a member of it. And I'm grateful for all the other organizations that service us as NP professionals. But when you're starting off and you're and you tap into a, a, a niche, you really want to make sure that um, the legalities are in place. Yeah, because if not, yeah. they'll 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 close they'll close you down before you get started. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's just you don't want to expose yourself to that risk. You know, and it's yeah. it, it it sounds a lot easy is what sounds a lot harder than it really is. It's really not that hard, guys. It takes no. You can do a um a who is so if you type in a Google domain search, okay, yeah. um, and you want to look up a domain that you're possibly interested in, just you can put in your search there. Now, just because there are a lot more domains coming out, I I, I always recommend. That if like your domain is taken, say it's something like quite popular or something like that, you want to start in, I don't know, like npresumesupport.com and that's taken. Yeah. Then do npresumesupport.co. Correct. Do, do dot dot. Um, I mean, I don't know if, if someone's in the nursing slash crypto space, um, you could do like dot XYZ is a really popular one in the crypto space. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, dot wallet is another popular one in the crypto space. So, I mean, I think you have like a lot of uh, options to avoid um, the legal issues that come with just like, like it would be lazy to get caught on a legal issue by copying someone's name, you know, like, yeah. And, and then what happens you know? is I don't even think people really copy names as much. And I'm speaking prematurely without doing research. I think sometimes what they do is, um, Put it this way, I think we all copy each other in some way or form. For instance, I am not the first one to invent a magazine. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I had to um, mm -hmm. get the blueprint from someone. So yeah. the blueprint, and I think, Chris, I, you, you're aware of the person who I got the blueprint from. So my mentor is the former uh, manager of NASCAR magazine. So that's where I got the, the blueprint I didn't from. know that, like, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> so, um, and, and I met her through pageantry. So, um, so that's how it is, wow. um, as far as the, the, the networking. So pageantry is a great way to, to network. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy I don't have to work on my body anymore though. Cause I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, not, promised me, you promised me, you promised me your world famous, you, you promised me your world famous, uh, what was it like, like, like brown stew? Brown stew. Chicken. Yeah. I need to yeah. make the brown stew chicken for you. Um, um, and usually we don't eat it with the gungo peas and rice. You do it with plain white rice, but I can do it with that. I mean, the, the cool thing is we have our family reunion in Jamaica. I'm so excited. Um, in July, 2022. So I can make sure that when I come back, I have some things, uh, for you. And, um, and you already know how that goes. Like the, like the ackee has to be boiled first before cooked first, before we bring it and so forth but i can make the ackee and saltfish and things like that but yeah <laughs> all right all right i have a question for you and this is so off topic but i need to know what is your favorite jamaican restaurant in atlanta is it's jamrock right on metropolitan because that's a spot <laughs> you know what's funny i do like chef rob in um oh of course of course you know my first name of course go on yeah i think it's been a while since i uh been there so in jamaica there's a term that we say there like the price to there so some of the some of the prices for <laughs> for the food that they make that they make that I can make myself okay it's it's there it's too much money because the other day i went to go to um golden crust and get some oxtail and i said you know how much is just i just want a thing of oxtail that's it and she was like um oh I think she said $31, $31. Like you gotta be bloody kidding me. <laughs> like, That's you, fair. For those oh. who are not familiar with some of the jargon and vernacular, we say like, we, we say bloody, which is a lot kind of like with the Brits, but it was just, it blew my mind. But anyway. That's fair. Um, yeah. No, <laughs> that, 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 that's fair. I feel the same when you go to an Indian restaurant and you're charging like, you know, you go to the hipster Indian spots now in, in, in Atlanta. Um, and it's a great place to like take someone who hasn't had a lot of Indian food, but then you go there and they're trying like, like, like twenty five bucks for like a veg only dish, and you're like, what are you doing? Like, 
like is it they like bucks? yeah 27 bucks for a dial <laughs> yeah i know it's like yeah it's like dollar to roti is 21 bucks because like exactly. a it hipster doesn't... put in a fancy cup and i'm like what are you doing um all right, no, no, we, 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 we have value to add. We have, we have topics to discuss. What were we talking about? Um, so. <laughs> I know, but you started bringing up roti, roti Christian. You know, I'm wild over roti, so that's... No, crazy. it's fair. It's fair. <laughs> um, in, uh, in, uh, so I think you, you, you made a good point in terms of like, uh, we're talking about kind of like goals for 2022 and whatnot, right? Um, yes. How does... So like I the way we we look at okay so here's something we did in 2021 right we were focusing so much on growth because uh, we grew a lot out of COVID last year um, right around uh, June July August we grew a ton just because re- it was exceptionally hard to find preceptors then it was hard for us to find preceptors then um, everybody was sort of canceling on students because no one knew what was sort of happening so we grew a lot then we grew a lot this year. And then right around the middle of this year, something happened where we started, we grew, and we sort of outgrew our systems. So we had a lot of uh, issues that came with that. It's good. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's good. But then it's also bad because imagine, like, you have, like, a boat, right? And, you know, you, bring, you can bring more people on this boat, more people on the boat, and people are coming. They're having a good time. But then all of a sudden, your boat's not going slower or your boat's starting to sink a little bit. Or when there's a, when, when there's a wave, your boat goes down for a second and comes back up. And we found a lot of that happening um, Q2, Q3 of this year. So really what we ended up focusing on in Q4 and now moving to Q1 is fixing that boat, making sure that our mm-hmm. system can sustain it since we can grow, right? We can help more students. There are more students out there. It's not like we have like solved the shortage, right? The students haven't just gone away. They're still here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's now our, our sort of growth point going into 2022. It's not just about making more money. It's not just about growing as a company and having the, I don't know, like, you know, like the prestige or the clout that comes with like, oh, yeah, like we're helping more students or, yeah, we're going to hit this amount of money this year. It's actually about, no, how do we deliver the, the service at scale? You know, Got the it. quality that, we, that, that, that we want to deliver, the quality that we're known to deliver, how do we do that when we're two, three, four X bigger? Um, so that's how that's sort of like it was a natural formation of like okay this was going wrong and we actually have to fix it into 2022 which is leading to our first like our goals for next year for you and for maybe even like a first time business owner who hasn't had a full year of of a few years of examination of their business right this is year two for them they had a decent year and now they're like what do i do now um yeah how do you think about growing and trying to bring in more patients or say you own your practice more patients or more more dollars in versus like making the system better and the experience better like what comes first for you and how should nurses think about that oh wow considering that i don't have a practice that, <laughs> that with patients well so... don't maybe not necessarily in a practice setting think about it just in a okay. larger business setting right so in your business how do you think about maybe um in, is 2022 the year where you make your magazine qu- content better or is 2022 the year where you find more subscribers and more people to buy the magazine awesome 2022 is the year that we get more subscribers and secure more advertising and sponsorship and i'm just going to just put it out there so we are really focusing and i hired, hired a um a marketing pr team that's well known in atlanta that help other um organizations grow because I realized that's where the weak point. So it's important for you to evaluate what what's going on and why you're missing out on hitting those goals. If you mm. start doing that, don't wait until the fourth quarter. Like we're, we're the, this fourth quarter is, is over. So we're already yeah. in 2022. That's what people don't even realize. Mm-hmm. You should have already by by the time you were finishing second quarter going into third, you should have already say, okay, this is trending in the way we want. This is not, what are we going to do to, um, because we, we can look at it as healthcare symptoms. We're bleeding here. What do we do to stop this and close up this wound so it could heal? And so um, with that, it was best for me to outsource it, have someone, yeah. have a company, that's that all they do. And they'll bring the visibility, do more ads, because that's one of the things that we did not do. We didn't do the um, the ads. We didn't utilize Google. And for those who are turning, tuning in, Google has so many like 
complimentary i hate to use the word free but complimentary like resources that you could use to elevate and enhance your business where as far as the backlinks and things like that those keywords you know making sure your seos are in place so that's really what we're focusing on because one of the things is i want to make sure that we continue to serve as a resource where students could get like where they learn about the other companies out there such as NP Hub, such as um, the NP Society, such as their nursing studio, such as um, I'm trying to think another one, High Yield Med Med Reviews. They have a great uh, pharmaceutical um, courses that can help you be prepared for prescribing uh, as a nurse practitioner. And that's huge because you Mm -hmm. do not get the, I I do not feel like they get enough of training and when i say that i'm talking from experience not just as someone who went through mp school but i work in academia now i mean i still serve that's part of my giving back i'm you know i'm serving now at georgia baptist college of nursing that i love the students there they do a great job investing Mm -hmm. in quality quality students that they accept so it's amazing so at the end of the day you can be the bomb.com student But it's about the if you're not aware of the resources that are out there and how to utilize those resources, then you're not. I mean, you're going to you won't be as good as the next person. That's really what's going to happen. So that's what we're doing. We want to focus on what we're about. Our mission is to help students with every aspect of their life in and out of school. We follow a will of life um, that talks about how the importance of how like MP school is only uh, only one out of seven aspects of the actual life. And so when one thing is out of harmony, it's going to impact the way you perform in school. So I'm definitely making sure we stay with that as far as well-being um, and and also bring some things back. So that's the cool thing about having that part outsourced. When you have it outsourced, that's a form of automation. So then now mm-hmm. I could really bring back the other thing. When we first launched in 2018, it was very organic. I was just interviewing people on live, Facebook Live. I remember, I yeah. I was just having fun with it. I kind of was like, I didn't even know, like, I was just like, well, let me do this. And now after making meeting with my team and they were like, look, we want you to do that. And, and I would tell, and Chris, you would tell me all the time, you know, in our sidebar conversation, you're like, Patrice, you need to do videos again. Patrice, you need to do vi-. And I'm like, oh no, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I look good enough. I'm shy, I'm this. And you're like, no, you talk all the time. You have good presence. And then like, for God's sake, you done pageantry. And then I'm still like, and I would shy away from it. Yeah. But I'm shying away from it is because internally that goes once again back into you internally. And that's what students need to understand that how you practice is also a reflection of what's going on inside. So that magazine has to make sure that we let you know the resources are out there. We cover the stories. We want to make sure that we are your go to. Okay. Like your go to when it comes to, okay, how do I navigate this? Because even simple things such as your love life can enter and interfere with how well you do in school. It's gonna impact whether you take have to take a pause or you actually matriculating through the program. So we wanna keep it there. We wanna keep it there, keep it simple. Yes, we do offer some courses that have been approved, but right now they're, they're there, they're on demand. If you're interested, mm-hmm. you can go there <laughs> and go to, I believe the, 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 um, the domain we have is mpstudenthelp.com. So you can go to npstudenthelp.com. And I told you we got domains, we got domains, okay? So <laughs> <laughs> you can go there for the courses. I'm really taking a break from live courses. I'm taking okay. a break from live courses. The next live thing we do um, will be the end of the school year summit to help students transition on April right, 23rd, right. once again, 2022. But yeah, Chris, you're absolutely right. Once you identify what, um, you know, like, hey, how do we do better? Because you can always do better, right? Mm-hmm. There's always room. Then you 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 get the help that you need um, and you go from there. And, and that's think, what it's about. Because there's so many things students need help with. They don't even realize it until they get into that situation. I, I'm with you a thousand percent. And I think uh, like 
a, a great way to get a head start on the next year. And this is something I've been doing mm-hmm. now for a few years. Um, I learned this. I forget where I learned this from. But um, start your New Year's resolutions three weeks earlier, two weeks earlier. Build that momentum. You know, start it the 20th of December. And that way, by the time the first comes around, you're not slogging it through. Because let's be honest, the first, you're useless, right? You're probably hungover from the day before. You're probably on the couch watching football. <laughs> I'll be watching football, you know, on the first. You got to do the bowl games and all that. You know, second comes in, you're still like, like you don't really start on your goals, quote unquote, if you don't. And like the second is when you start thinking about them. You're thinking about them for a couple of days. The fifth comes around, and that's like when you get started. When the truth is, if you get started a week early, so you get started the 26th, 27th, the 20th. You know, sure, take a day off. Like I'm like like sure, take a day or two off for the you know Christmas or whatever. But jumpstart on some of those goals that you have for the following year, so you have momentum going into the year. You know, it's such a small little thing that really does make a material impact, um, and it just makes you start your year off right. You know. Yeah. Um, Amazing. Uh, Patrice, so uh, I think we can wrap up at this point. But before we do that, why don't you tell everyone how to reach you? Maybe two or three of those 4,000 domains you own. Um, Where you are (laughs) on social media that you want people to reach out to you. um, And yeah, or if you want people to email you, like whatever. Well, I'm also going to put a call out there for anyone who's interested in being an ambassador, an MP student ambassador at your school um, and spreading the word about um, MP Student Magazine as a resource. Um, for additional information, you can email me at info at mpstudentmagazine.com. If you're interested in subscribing to the quarterly magazine, um, it, you can go to mpstudentmagazine.com um, on that home page. And um, follow us on IG and Facebook at MP Student Mag. So even though we're a magazine, our, our handle is at MP Student Mag. Um, but we're, we're so happy about serving. It's really, it's all about you. It's been all about you. Um, we just made, we wanted to make sure that we know what you need. So always feel free to let us know what we can do better. In our newsletter, when you subscribe, there's surveys. The survey just went out last week, Krish, about asking new students, like, you know, what do you need help with? What's, you know, because it, it changes. It, it, you know, it can change yeah. depending on what's going on. Like, for instance, the help students needed in 2022 and 2021 was different from what they needed in 2018. And that's because of the pandemic. So right. sometimes things shift. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, for everyone tuning in, uh, when this show go, this show we're recording it towards the end of the year in December. The show will go live. I think it'll probably get live the first two weeks in January. Um, so people, it'll be plenty of time for everyone listening in to register for the end of the year summit that you're hosting, um, whatever the name might be. And I'm really excited uh, just to kind of follow what you're doing in 2022. I think you're gonna have a great year. Likewise, thank you.